This is the dome-shaped interior of a corbelled or beehive stone chamber. Optical luminescence dating places its construction around 1250 AD or 1500, about 500 to 800 years ago. This isn't somewhere in Europe. This is in Upton, Massachusetts. Mysterious ancient stoneworks hide in plain sight across New England. Stone walls, possible perched boulders, stone cairns, effigy works, stone chambers, and more. I'm Mike Luoma, an author and researcher in Vermont, exploring stoneworks, looking more deeply into these ancient stone mysteries of New England. This year, the pandemic detoured me from a planned research trip to Native American mounds and earthworks in the Ohio Valley and beyond, keeping me at home, where I was discovering I might not need to leave New England to experience Native American stone and earthworks after all. It should be noted that there are some who see no mystery in our stones. In the late 1970s, Vermont's first state archaeologist wrote, While there are still many archaeological puzzles in Vermont, the stone chambers are not among them. There are many anthropologists and archaeologists who still believe the chambers are simply colonial root cellars, chimney supports, or other historic constructions. They attribute all of New England's stoneworks to colonial farmers clearing fields or building staging for stone walls or beautifying their farms to keep their kids from leaving home. This stone chamber was likely used as an ice house at one time, on the banks of the Neshoba Brook in Acton, Massachusetts, near a pond. It's been studied and stabilized and tamed for public use, with a plaque out in front and everything. The archaeological community was pushing back hard in the late 1970s against the theories of Dr. Barry Fell and others proposing the stone chambers and other works were built by pre-Columbian European explorers. While lecturing the pre-Columbian theorists on their ignorance of 10,000 years of Native American habitation, the archaeologists couldn't even conceive of the possibility that Native Americans had anything to do with the stoneworks. All were deemed colonial constructs. It was, for some reason, a given that Native Americans never worked in stone. In his 2018 book, Stone Prayers, Massachusetts anthropologist and archaeologist Curtis Hoffman faults many colleagues for indulging in dogmatic scientism for maintaining this attitude today. A view he said, quote, developed without reference to the published literature and as far as I can tell, solely based on an aversive reaction to the claims of both non-professional and tribal groups, end quote. In other words, it has no basis in fact, and was born out of backlash. Scientistic. Scientism. But not science. It is refreshing a professional like Hoffman is actively considering the mysteries of these stoneworks, a vocational archaeologists, amateurs, researchers like myself, have done most of the legwork up until now. In fact, Hoffman cites 
two such researchers, James W. Maver Jr. and Byron E. Dix, for their groundbreaking 1989 book, Manitou, where they proposed that New England's stone chambers, walls, and other workings could be of Native American origin, basing their theories on astronomical alignments they found in the stoneworks. Maver and Dix spent a lot of time here, at Calendar One, near South Royalton, Vermont. They felt astronomical observations made along ground alignments here allowed Native Americans to mark days and seasons, so they called it a calendar. The Calendar One chamber has been missing its roof for a long time. On the beautiful day we hiked in to see it, I could sympathize with those who had thought it some sort of ancient temple. Maver and Dix's radiocarbon dating found this chamber to be 435 to 470 years old, possibly built sometime in the 1500s. Nope, the archaeologists insisted, just a colonial root cellar. Likewise, a nearby Eagle Chamber was said to have been built to store apples for cider in late colonial days. But to my eyes, Eagle Chamber's construction, incorporating the bedrock, makes it seem an even older chamber than the Calendar One Chamber. But that's an admittedly subjective idea, mostly intuitive. I'm sure these chambers were used in colonial times for food or ice storage or whatever. But what about before that? Later colonial usage doesn't invalidate earlier possible utility. In fact, later use might wipe out or obscure any material culture evidence of what, if anything, went on before it.
It's hard to tell how old the Calendar 2 chamber, near South Woodstock, Vermont, is. Maver and Dix called it Calendar 2 when they discovered you could see sunrise on the winter solstice from the chamber. A rounded mound outside, the inside here is neatly squared off. Its dimensions are said to mirror those of the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid, on a smaller scale, by those who say such things. Great thanks to my friend, Vermont folklorist and author Joe Citro, for taking me up to see Calendar 2. Joe also tipped me off to the secret location of a hidden tunnel chamber in Vermont. I can't tell you where it is, but I can show you this unique chamber. A source of Joe's at the highway department later suggested the chamber was actually an old stone culvert. Some additional research led me to believe he was right, and that the old road over it was probably washed away in what they call the Great Flood of 1927 around these parts. From ancient stones to highway stones, as you may have noticed, None of these chambers is really the same as any of the others. Each is unique, different in its own way. 
seems a mistake to make sweeping generalizations about all of them. For me, their possible varied origins makes these stones even more mysterious. The dating that's been done on some of these chambers and other stone workings certainly suggests they're of prehistoric Native American origin. The picture is emerging of vast ceremonial stone landscapes, the land perhaps tuned by rows of stacked stones and by perch boulders, the sacred landscape acknowledged by participation with it, or so it seems. I began my explorations and research into these ancient stone mysteries of New England with an open mind. The more I've experienced and learned, the less inclined I am to believe in pre-Columbian European explorers, or Phoenicians, as the builders of New England's ancient stone workings. Nor do I think they're all colonial. Instead, I've come to believe we are seeing the work of indigenous peoples, the ancestors of our Native Americans, and that we have sorely underestimated their abilities, capabilities, aspirations, technology, spirituality, their humanity. In general, we've been lied to by our history as to who they truly were. Cultural erasure, genocide, ethnic cleansing, despite all of this, when we stop and really listen to the stones, they're still telling their stories. We need to listen better and keep exploring and experiencing these ancient stone mysteries of New England.